Whole South Million family, what is up? Hope you guys all had a great weekend, but man, I got you guys today, a power player. I am honored um, to be in one of his mastermind with him. This dude, this guy is absolutely incredible, amazing. Um, I had the pleasure to and, and um, to jump on his podcast, podcast, and I tell you, man, this guy is one of the best interviewers out there, hands down. The question that he asked, he dig deep into your soul, makes you open up, right? Um, and it really makes you think, man. And um, so he's been wholesaling for 15 years. But just, I think, within the last month or two months, I'm not exactly sure. I'll let him tell you the story, how he stopped wholesaling and went for his passion into something else, man. Um, I, I listened to it on his podcast and, and how he makes the transitions. It's absolutely um, inspiring. And so I'm going to let you guys um, hear his stories. Now, listen, this video is not to get you away from not doing wholesale and things like that. But I think after listening to his stories, maybe you'll be able to find what you want to do or whatever that is and then help guide you in the directions where you're more fulfilled. So uh, anyways, you guys, put your hand, put your thumbs together and help me uh, welcome Alex. What's going on, player? Kong, what is up, my man? Dude, you are one of my favorite people. You always bring the energy, always put a smile on my face. And uh, I'm really grateful for uh, inviting me on your show, my friend. I love what you're doing and uh, love. I see you inspiring people, man. And I'm one of them. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you for the kind word. But um, Alex, for those that don't know you, man, well, first of all, dude, how's your weekend, bro? We, I'm blessed, man. I have absolutely nothing to complain about. I got a beautiful family. We're all healthy. And uh, we, we have so much opportunity. You know, and, and you and I have the ability to impact people's lives and, to, you know, get behind a microphone and kind of share our thoughts, our story, our wins, our losses, because we all have them, our challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. doesn't mean I don't have challenges because I do, but uh, I'm blessed, bro. I'm blessed. Absolutely, man. So, um, Alex, man, for those that don't know you, give us a little background about your story, man. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to give you the, the brief, uh, short version of it, but you know, uh, I can't, I come from a, from a, from a Cuban family. My entire family's from Cuba. My sister and I mm -hmm. were born in Miami and, uh, middle-class working hard, you know, your, your typical story. And, uh, I don't come from a rags to riches and, uh, but I also wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. You know, my, my parents worked 14 hour days to make sure that my sister and I had clothes and food and, um, and I'm super grateful for that. I owe them so much. And I remember, uh, you know, being young, 10, 11, 12 years old, and I was always very ambitious. When you asked, you know, when, when people describe me, especially early on, ambition was a word that came up pretty frequently. And I remember um, I always wanted to do something big with my life. And at the time, I remember from the moment I was 12 years old all the way up to 23, I thought doing something big with my life was to be a big wig at a big corporation. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I think honestly, now that I've, I've had the chance to really look back and ask myself better questions, I think it was an ego thing. I think there was some prestige that I associated with being the CEO or a CFO of a, a big company, right? And so, um, you know, when I was a kid, I would buy baseball cards and I would flip them, essentially wholesale them. And I, that's when, you know, uh, that's when I started making money really as, as kind of a, an entrepreneur, quote unquote. And so wow. I always had that bug inside of me, but for whatever reason, when I got to college, I wanted to climb the corporate ladder. You know, I, I wanted to, uh, to be kind of a big time in a big co corporation. So I started interviewing with companies like Johnson and Johnson and General Electric and General Motors and ended up getting, uh, uh, what I thought was a really good job at the time. I was 22 years old in General Electric's financial management program. And, uh, Kong, you know, those defining moments in your life for me, it was March, 2003. I had moved from Miami to Atlanta, first time living on my own. Three months into this job, I was averaging, dude, realistically like 70 to 75 hours a week. And my entire job was behind Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint. And I've always asked myself thought provoking questions. And, you know, I remember it was like a Friday night. My friends in Miami were texting me that they were going out and doing fun things. And here I was at 10, 11 o'clock at night in the office working you know, because we were trying to close out the, the first quarter. And I would look at my boss and ask myself, do I want her job? And the answer was, hell no. 
And then I would look at my boss's boss and kind of all the way up the ladder. And I quickly realized that I, I can't live the kind of life I want working for someone else. It, it was one of those defining moments, but I had made a commitment to myself. This was a two year program. I had moved from Miami and, uh, and I wanted to finish that out strong, you know, and I wanted to take the experience for what it was worth. It was one of the best things I ever did because I got to travel. I got to meet people. I got to improve my communication skills, my ability to network and connect with people. And so that's a key point in my story that I want to share with you is even if you're doing something that you don't enjoy, always ask what you're meant to learn and how you're meant to grow from whatever experience or whatever environment you're in. That's something that, you know, I'm not... Uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I realized early on that like, I've committed to this. Let me finish the commitment, but more importantly, how can I grow from this experience as a person? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I finished out that two years and I remember January, 2005, I basically fired my boss. They wanted me, uh, they wanted to promote me into now that they've invested so much money in this program and into me. Um, I told them, honestly, I said, look, um, I want to do something for myself. I want to start a business at that time. I didn't know what it was, but uh, I moved from New York to Miami in January, 2005, and I was trying to discover myself. And for me, I love travel and I was single. I didn't have a whole lot of money, but I had a little bit of money and I didn't have a job. And I said, you know what? Now's the perfect opportunity for me to travel. So I called a buddy and we ended up on a backpacking trip that lasted about three and a half months all over Europe. We went to like Whoa. 53 cities in 24 countries in three and a half months and I was in an internet cafe in Ibiza and a buddy of mine, I'll never forget it. A buddy of mine, Ray sent me an email. He said, Hey, this guy by the name of Dave Lindahl is doing this uh, marketing for deals bootcamp. Now, if you don't know, Dave Lindahl is a big apartment guy and he was doing a, a bootcamp on how to market for deals. It was $997 and Kong to give you some perspective. I had funded this entire three and a half backpacking trip on my credit card I was about seven grand that I had put on my credit card and 997 seemed like a lot of money to me. Like it was, it was a world of money back then. And, um, but again, it was one of those defining moments. I knew I was going to, I was scheduled to go back to Miami in about a month. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have a job lined up. Um, in fact, I was moving back in with my parents, which I was a little bit embarrassed about it from being very vulnerable with you. I was 25 years old and I was going to be moving in back with my parents and, single that that's just not a good look, right? Like I, that's not what I had expected and anticipated for my life. So I put the 997 on my credit card and this was October of 05. I went and my mind was blown <clears throat> up until that point. My idea of real estate was what I learned from Carlton sheets. I thought that I was supposed to just go out and assume a bunch of loans, right? Uh, because that's what I learned in no money down. But I quickly realized that there's people in distress <laughs> that we can help them by providing a service. And so I literally plucked out a pre foreclosure letter in that manual and I didn't have much money. So I photocopied them. It was so ghetto calm because you could see like the three ring binder. You could see the black holes, true story. And so I bought a bunch of envelopes and stamps. And I remember for like days I was licking and stuffing and stamping envelopes and I sent out 300 and something pre foreclosure letters to a particular zip code in Miami and my phone started to ring. I didn't have a script. I didn't know what to do. And I was making every mistake in the book. I was just fumbling and I ended up setting an appointment and I called my friend Ray and I called a few other people. What am I supposed to do? How do I do this? And I just kind of pieced it along and I got in front of a bunch of and I got my first property under contract. And uh, it was a short sale that we ended up wholesaling. So not the easiest uh, deal to, to do on your first one, but I made $44,000, which I ended up splitting with my buddy, Ray. And, uh, and man, that's all she wrote. I haven't looked back ever since then. Boom. Alex, man, I got, dude, your story's absolutely incredible. But I think the way that you tell the story, bro, there's something about you when you talk and dude, there's, when you tell the stories, man, it just sucked. It, it, it really sucked people in, man. Everything was clear, precise to the point. Now, Alex, let me, so when you got into, um, obviously you've been wholesaling for, for 15 years now, bro. So let's, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about, so where, 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 where was your business at? All right. Yeah. How long did it took you to grow that business to where it's at now? And then decided, you know what, that's not what I want to do anymore. And then let's talk about your new venture, man. 
Yeah. So, you know, great question, Kong. I've had a lot of ups and downs in my business. For the first four years, I was a one-man show. It wasn't a mm. business. It was just me hustling. And, and I was, you know, doing a couple of deals a month and I was making really, really good money. And, uh, you know, 2007, I, I made a big mistake and got involved in my first rehab. Um, at that time, I didn't have a coach or a mentor on my side. And I ended up getting involved in a, in a rehab that was about a half million dollar property. Long story short, I lost about $51,000 on that rehab. And for me, that was one of the biggest blessings in my life. Now, you might be listening to this and saying, you lost 51 grand. How's that a blessing? That was the turning point for me to go out and get a coach. Up until that point, I saw coaches and mentors as an expense, not an investment. You and I both know it's a huge investment in yourself. And, um, and, and my coach told me, hey, look, go out and read this book. Uh, it was called uh, The 4-Hour Workweek, which most people probably have heard of, Tim Ferriss. And then I read that book and I've always been the ready, fire, aim type of guy. So I read that book and I literally went to like a, a website. I don't even know if it's around anymore called Get Friday. And I got a VA. I got a VA. I was paying like 10 bucks an hour. Didn't know what I was doing. But that was how I started to learn how to manage people and train people. So even though it was a massive failure because that VA only lasted me like three months, I learned so much. So it was actually a huge win. And um, 2012 came around and it was just me and a VA. And I realized that there's only 24 hours in a day. I was, uh, I was single at the time. I would be on dates and my phone would be ringing. I'd literally be at dinner or at a movie or somewhere, you know, with, with somebody I was dating and my phone was just blowing up and it was sellers, right? And I felt this pull, like I want to take it because that's my business, right? Yep. Or at least I thought it was a business, but I'm with this person. And so I realized, man, I need to hire somebody. Um, I need to hire someone to get the phones off my plate. So that when I'm on my off time, I'm on my off time and I can be fully present. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then so I, I brought somebody on. And so from 2013, all the way through basically a couple of months ago, I was focused on building a team that um, of the right people. And that's key. You know, uh, what's this guy? Uh, the book, Good to Great, Jim Collins. He talks about putting the right people in the right seat on the right bus. I read that book early on and it was all about building a small team around me that would do a lot of the heavy lifting so that I could uh, do my very best to automate the wholesaling business, you know, mm. which can be a challenge because it's a transactional business. But the team grew up, it grew to all the way nine people last year. And uh, we're wholesaling deals here in the South Florida market. And uh, I'll kind of pause there because I, I, I'm sure you're going to have some questions. But yeah, man, for 2013 through last year, really earlier this year, it was just focused on building a team and we were wholesaling properties here in South Florida. Bro, dude, I can, uh, I can relate to you uh, with your stories when you said about your phone blow up, man. Shit, dude, <laughs> the when I was real. getting to, um, you know, when when I was getting into the whole fix and flip game, man. Um, so the thing is, Alex, like my wife and I, man, when we decided to get into real estate, you know, it's not just for the money, but for the time freedom, right? Being able to sit, you know, to travel and do whatever we want, whenever, wherever, etc. And we're like, you know what? Real estate's going to be the game. It's going to get us there. And then all of a sudden I went into the real estate game, man, caught myself into the whole fix and flip. Now I'm waking up at five o'clock in the morning and my day don't end until like 10, sometime 11 at night. You know, replying back to contractor. I was up early going to Home Depot. I say, and then four years in, man, four years in, I say, what the heck am I doing? I was, I was tap out. I was extremely stressed, man. And I said, you know what? Uh, dude, this is, this is not what I want. <laughs> like, it's not what I want, man. And then I got into the whole wholesaling, right? And just like you, man, I was a one man show doing everything myself, right? Hang out with the wife or whatever, but my phone ring and I like, oh man, the demoni, it's moni time. You know I get what it. I'm saying, man? Yeah, I I'm get like, it. It's moni time, man. I gotta go get it. <laughs> but, but, but then, but then, you know, your life just gets stuck into it. Just chasing, right? Yeah. Just chasing that right. money, chasing that deal. And then obviously, you know, getting into building a team just like you, man, it's like, hey, I, 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 I just can't do this. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's when building a team and getting system and all that in place. And I know a lot of you, you know, ask about, so Kong, when, when is it ready for me to hire? Like you will know, man, you will know when it's time for you um, to hire that first person. Yes. You know that when you're doing, when, when you just, when, when you just overload with, with work, you know, some of you are starting out, 
I highly recommend you just got to do, you just got to do the work yourself. You got to learn the rope and all of that. You know, if you have, if you haven't even talked to a seller, how can you train your team up to know how to talk to seller, how to handle objections uh, and things like that, right? Get some few deals under your belt, man. Eventually, um, uh, then build it up where you need to have a team. And, and, and I think someone said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, you got to have a, you, you got to have a team. So <laughs> true. So true. Yeah. And you know, I think Kong, it's super important for people. You know, this is a, this is a self-awareness game. You know, you have to know your strengths. We all, my belief mm. is we all have God given talents and unique abilities. You got to double, triple down on your strengths and outsource, delegate, uh, mm. or delete your weaknesses. Right. And, and you only have 24 hours in a day and, and it's, don't think that because you work harder, you're going to make more money. That's a fallacy. Mm. That's just not true. Working hard does not guarantee you're going to make more money. You got to work smart as well. And when you bring the right people around you, um, you start to work smarter. You start to, uh, to, to gain the, 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 the power of leverage. Really. You have to leverage. Bro, bro, dude, that, that is so, so true, man. And I also want you guys, for those of you who's listening, man, let me tell you something and let me tell you kind of where, what made me the transitions to hire. So the thing is, don't, don't, don't step over dollars for pennies. Right. Let me tell you, and let me tell you what that is. Uh, for those of you who don't understand, man, it took me like a year and a half and the wife keep on telling me, Colin, you, you need to hire somebody to help you out. You need to hire someone. In my mind, I said, well, you know, it's going to cost them this. It's going to cost me 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 this, right? You know, I got to pay them insurance. Um, you know, what if they miss out on opportunities? What if they miss out on deals? You see, I keep on thinking what I'm losing instead of what I'm gaining. Boom. I'm going to gain back, you know, five or six hours of my life. Yep. That way I can spend working on my business. You know, I'm gaining time where I can hang out. So what if I lose a deals, right? But dude, those time frame I don't have to work, and someone's working and getting me a deal. And I remember, uh, I remember watching um, "Man Who Built America," bro, and and Rockefeller. Dude, that's for those of you who haven't seen that movie. Awesome. Those, yeah, those that movie, bro, was freaking awesome, man. It, and super inspiring. Super Ab inspiring. Absolutely, and and I think uh, and in there, man, Rockefeller said, um, "What." He, he rather makes 1% and, have, and they basically have everyone do the work than him doing all the labor work and make 100%. That's right. 1% right. of every man's effort versus 100% of your own, right? Yep. And it goes, it, go, it goes back to leverage. And you know what? The other thing, I think uh, people don't value their time. You know, t time, I, sometimes I ask people, hey, what's your most valuable resource? And oftentimes people tell me money or this or that. Time is your most valuable resource. It's the one, of the one thing you cannot get back. You can always make money, right? But you can always, you can't, once time is gone, it's gone, mm. right? And when you start to hire and bring the right people around you, you start to get back your time. And a very practical, simple exercise is, you know, write down everything you're doing, do a, do a, a task uh, audit, you know, every 15, 20 minutes, write down what you do. And then at the end of the week, ask yourself, you're going to have this long list. What is revenue generating? that gives me energy. Um, and then what drains me from energy that's non-revenue generating? That should be the first thing that you get off your plate, the non-revenue generating activities that drain you from energy. You need to be, you need to tap into your unique ability and hopefully that those are the things that give you energy, not zap you from energy. <sighs> Dude, that's, that's some good stuff right there, man. And Another thing that I want you guys to understand is, I, I know that when, 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 when Alex, when, when you mentioned about, you know, ego corporations being the big boss bro i caught myself into that too dude and you know with especially with social media now you're seeing people yeah. put out all this you know thing here where you where you start twerk, uh, twerking like your mind starts to say hey that is success but that's not what success is man what well, success is whatever it is for you that makes you happy and fulfilled it's not it's not someone else's put out the image Cause dude, I used to think, you know, oh yeah, man, that's, that's what success is. You know, I, I, it's the ego thing too, bro. I want to have an office. I want to walk in and I want to, I want to have employee and, and make you feel like powerful. Yeah. And I, I remember getting my first office space and I went in there. It felt good for the first day. Felt good for the first week. But after a while, man, after six months, man, I looked at myself and I was like, what am I doing? I said, yeah. you know, 
I get away from the box and now I put myself in my own box, yeah. right? I get That's myself right. away from the box, man. And then why am I putting myself back into the box? Right. And then I say, you know what? I don't want this to be my business. I don't want to wake up and have to walk through a, to, to an office and, and all that. I, I want to be able to free, man. I want to be able to be free like a bird. I just want to soar. And, uh, and, 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 and see, so, so the thing is, I start to like realize, well, what, what I want in my life, not what other people is or oh. want, right? So, brother, you, is, you I, nailed it. You nailed it. Keep going, keep going, because you're, you're see, preaching. I, see, the thing is, Alex, and, and I think um, in CG too, bro. In CG, when you start to surround yourself by bigger players, then you start to realize that, you know what, a lot of times maybe what you're doing is not wrong or it's not, yeah, like sometimes, sometimes you think what you're doing, like you're not on the right path because yeah. you're seeing everyone else that's are crushing it, that are, that are big, that have big numbers or office space. But then when you start to go behind the scenes and hang out with them, you start to realize that these guys and gals are doing big numbers, but it all comes in one thing, my friend, is profit and time. How much time do you work a day and how much profit do you net from it? That's right. So, you know, so, so, so when you sit down, because dude, and, and, and Alex, I did an interview and I talked to Brian, uh, for those of you who don't know, House Buying Brian, incredible guy, creative financing guy. And at one time too, man, I looked at myself and I thought that I wasn't winning. Because I was only doing one deals or two deals or three deals or whatever it is a month where I was only making 20K, 30K, 40K, 50K. Yeah. And I thought that I wasn't winning. Hmm. Right? So I said, well, dude, I'm only doing this. But these guys and gals are doing eight deals, 10 deals, 20 deals. But you know what, man? But when I start to get around them, I start to see that, hey, you know what? Even though they're doing high numbers, but two, they're profiting just as much as I am. Yeah. So I am winning, you know, but I was beating myself up so bad that I think I wasn't winning. But you see, because of the pictures, because people paint this picture. So I want those of you to realize, understand, man, play your own game. Focus yes. on your own game, man. Right. And, 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 and don't beat yourself up. Don't don't compare your chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. Right. And, and then just play, just play, just just play your own game, man. And, Dude, um, you just, you absolutely. Absolutely nailed it, Kong. I completely, completely agree with every single word you just said, right? Social media allows people to put up a facade and mm. you're, you're seeing what they want you to see. And look, social media is powerful. It's a fantastic tool. I'm mm. talking to the king right here. So I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to like, you know, I'm not breaking any ground here, but you know what? Um, that's one of the reasons that I, I, I challenge myself, uh, Kong, on my podcast is to not just share the wins, but also share where my struggles, my challenges, mm. because we all have them, you know, and, and, yep. and, um, dude, I fell into that trap when I got into a, in, into a mastermind and I started looking at what everyone was doing. I started to feel less than to a certain degree that that mm. was a me problem, right? Like that was yep. an internal, I had to look inside and say, why am I defining success based on how many deals I'm closing per month or how much money I'm making? Is that how I define success? And the answer was no, that's not how I define success because I'd rather work and make more. I want to spend time with my family. At the end of the day, I want to be happy. I want to create an impact. And yeah, don't get me wrong. I want to make, I want to make money like anybody else, right? We operate a business, but that's not how I define success. So I think the takeaway, man, and you summed it up beautifully, define what success looks like for you and follow your path because success has many roads. And we, sometimes we fall victim, myself included, to looking at somebody else and saying, well, they're doing 150 deals a year. I'm not doing that. I'm not successful. I mm. want to do that. But I don't know the inner workings of what's going on. What if I told you they were doing 150 deals a year? They're making 200 working 80 hours. Is that success? To me, it's not. Bro, dude, Alex, dude, that is, that is dead on, bro. Dude, that is just dead on, man. Like, I, I start to look into, dude, you hit it right there, bro. So if, if, if for those of you who look at them and say, hey, that's what I want, but, at, but just like what, what Alex said, man, dude, that's incredible, man. So now, Alex, let's get into, man, um, just because time, man, let's get into why did you decide the transitions and yeah. talk about your new venture now, man? 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it's when you asked me that question, it immediately puts a smile on my face. It was a journey, Kong. And this is this journey is probably going back about a year. You know, when I when I built my team up to nine people at some point last year in 2019, I think it was around June or July of 2019. And um, my overhead had ballooned up to roughly around 40 or 45,000 a month, which that number, it's all relative to some people. That's nothing to other people. That's a lot. Um, to me, that was a lot. You know, I, we average about $20,000, you know, per deal. That's our average profit per transaction here in Miami. So I basically, I, I, when I realized that I have to close two to two and a half deals just to break even, not forget about being profitable just to break even in a competitive market, I realized something's wrong. I didn't get into business to have a big team and to have a lot of overhead. You know, I, I want low overhead, low overhead, high profitability. That's what it's about to me. And, and yet I fell trapped to having a big team and we got the office and, you know, and, and that's just not what I wanted, but I had built this machine and I asked myself, how do I start to unwind this? Like, how do I get out of my own way? right? That was a question that kind of set me free. How do I get out of my own way? And fast forward, I didn't do anything for like five, six months. I continued to operate the business. I found myself in a missions trip in Guatemala. And uh, this is a missions trip that my friend and partner, Steve Cavanaugh uh, puts on, which it's called master mission. It's a half mastermind, half mission trip. And the first half of the day we spend masterminding it's my turn on the hot seat. And I didn't know what to talk about. I didn't know everything was good. You know, like for the most part, everything, I didn't have any major challenges, but something felt like it was missing. Like, a, have you ever put a piece of the puzzle together and there's a couple pieces missing and you feel like kind of empty because you, you, you spent all this time building this whole thing, but you got like two ugly gaps in the puzzle. That's what I felt like inside. I'm like, and, and for me, I felt like God had been tapping me on my shoulder, like, I'm meant to do something more with my life and I'm meant to do something different than just operate a wholesaling business in South Florida, you know? And, um, and at that time we had, we had built up Ascend, our mastermind and coaching community. And I was getting so much joy and fulfillment out of working with the right people that um, I'm sorry, let me, let me backtrack. At that time I had not built up Ascend. I didn't even know what Ascend was at that time. This was February of 2019 that I was on this missions trip and I opened up to people and I said, I don't know what to share with you guys, but I feel like something's missing. I'm, I'm happy, but yet I'm not like fully fulfilled. I'm not satisfied. Right. And I've, here's where my business is at and it's okay. And we have our challenges. And, but like, I don't know that I have the desire to grow and scale it anymore. Right. And that's, that's, I put out so much content about growing and scaling. And to a certain degree, I felt a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like I had to continue to go down that road because that's what people saw me as. And that's the kind of content I put out, but I wasn't being true to myself. And I said, this is not really what I want. How do I start to unwind it? I feel like God's calling on me to do something bigger. And Kong, that started a three to four month process of me working with my personal coach, reflecting a lot, praying a lot, meditating a lot, journaling. And, um, and finally in June of 19, I said, you want to know what? I feel like God's calling me to impact people's lives on a, on a deeper level than just through my podcast. So uh, Steve and I got together and we launched the Sends, which is a hybrid mastermind and, and coaching community. And uh, here we are a year later and we're completely full and, um, and that business is up and running and I'm not working a lot and I'm having a big impact and it's given me a lot of joy and fulfillment. And I knew something was off Kong. Here's, here was something that really triggered me, man. I don't know if you can relate to this, but people listening to this might think I'm crazy. I was getting more happiness out of somebody reaching out to me, telling me, Hey man, that podcast episode was awesome. Like it impacted me. It helped me do X, Y, Z. I was getting more joy out of that than closing a 15, 20, $25,000 deal. I genuinely was now don't get me wrong. I was super grateful for the money because you know, that's what takes care of the family and my team and everything else. But it wasn't, it wasn't a fulfillment piece. You know what I mean? It just, and, and dude, earlier this year, I really started to think hard and I said, what's preventing me from moving forward and living the kind of life I want? What's preventing me from living my vision? And the answer was, I'm still, even though I have a team around me that's doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting in my operation, I'm still in the operations, right? You know what I mean? I'm still managing them. I'm still monitoring the KPIs. I'm still responsible for the overhead. And, um, and dude, in June, 
I made the decision that I was going to, over the course of the next 30 to 45 days, uh, exit the business. And so I, uh, you know, had some conversations with my, with my right and left hand, you know, my, my core team and, uh, brother, I started the process and, you know, here we are. And, you know, it's been a couple of months now and, uh, dude, I feel so free. I feel I'm happy. I'm genuinely happy. I feel free. I'm getting to, to do the things I love the podcasts and working with, with our Ascend clients and the mastermind and, um, and nothing, man. I'm just, I'm having fun, dude. Dude, bro. That's, um, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Cause I know a lot of times where, you know, you've been doing something for so long, it kind of becomes part of you. Yeah. It becomes your identity almost. Yeah. Correct. And then to, to let it go. Um, now let me ask you, Alex, how hard was it, bro? How hard was it for you to cut that chain off and let it go so you can be free, bro? It was hard, man. It was hard. I mean, again, I had, I started having thoughts of something was missing February of 2019. And then I made the decision June, 2020. So I, I, almost a year and a half, you know, where I started the process of just, you know, starting to ask myself tough questions. And it was difficult, man, because like you said, it, it becomes your identity, you know, and uh, it, it, the thought crossed my mind, like, what would people think? But it, it was a small, it was a small thought. It wasn't what was really holding me back. What was holding me back was that like, I had been doing this for so long. I had built a profitable business. It wasn't like we weren't profitable. I just wasn't, it didn't bring me happiness and joy anymore, you know? And so I, um, fortunately I was able to work out an arrangement with one of my team members where I'm still able to get a piece of the deal. And he retained me as a consultant. Uh, so, you know, and I'm not leaving real estate. I still want to continue to grow my rental portfolio. Um, I have the opportunity to potentially get into some self storage, uh, deals, you know, but I'm focused more on adding value to deals versus being the day-to-day -day operator. There's a big mm. difference, right? So I, I love real estate. I still enjoy it. It's just not my passion. It's more of a vehicle. Makes sense, bro. Makes yeah. sense. So, um, now let me, Alex, I, I think you have already answered this question, but let me tell you, man, but let me ask you again, dude, when you decided to cut it off and saying, Hey, I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to go after this because this is what I really wanted to do. Be honest, bro. What was the biggest fear? What was the biggest fear in your head that took you so long? Uncertainty. Uncertainty. That that's the, that, that's the God's honest answer is, um, I, I didn't have a whole lot of fear associated with it because fortunately, you know, I have, I have other income sources, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that wasn't like, it was a big piece of it, but it wasn't like my, like I, I, I knew I was going to be all right making the decision. Now, had I had nothing else, I probably still would have made the decision because I'm the kind of guy that jumps in with two feet and I've always bounced back and figured it out. So, mm. but having those other income sources obviously makes it easier to make that decision. But yeah, I think the biggest fear was uncertainty. Like, Kong, if I showed you my calendar on my phone, you would think I'm a bum that does nothing because like, like here's, this is Tuesday. That's tomorrow. There's nothing on there. There's literally like nothing. Now that, do, that doesn't mean I'm going to be watching Netflix all day in bed and no, I'm still going to be productive. I'm still going to do things, but I get to do those things. I choose to do what it's not that I'm confined to my calendar now. You know what I'm saying? And before, if I would have showed you my calendar six months ago, it was, you know, a uh, sales meeting. It was a uh, team huddle. It was an interview. It was a, uh, this, it was a, uh, that like my days were packed. And even though mm. I, I put tight boundaries around my working hours because family's first and I spend a lot of time with my family, my days were packed. Now my days are like, I'm open, dude. I'm wide open. You know what I mean? Bro. Oh my God, bro. Alex, you know, man, when I, uh, when I got into real estate it's way before too, bro, and my day would not pack, right? Because you start getting into the business, you haven't been bit. And I think, man, I'm not successful. Successful people are busy. They're busy all the time. They're doing things. They have the, the calendars packed, gym pack and all that. And uh, the wife always tell me this, bro, but it's so hard for me to accept it before. And uh, she said, come rich people or, pe or, or wealthy people, they're not as busy. They're, they're not busy. It's just when they say they're busy to you because they just, right, they don't want to give your time, you their time. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like you got to earn it. So when people text you, they're like, hey, you know, whoever it is, dude, I'm telling you, I have more time now than I was way before when I was making 30K a year, 100K a year, right? I was working in the business. Yep. So I'm telling you, so <laughs> like I have more time now and I make more money now than ever was before. Yeah. So I don't want you guys to get confused like, oh, I got to be busy. Busy means successful. Busy means I'm, I'm successful. I'm making money. No, dude, you got to be productive. And when you get to, when you get to um, a certain point in your life, you know, like, just like what Alex mentioned, like the whole, the whole day he's open, dude, it's like, you get to choose now. Yeah. yeah, you get the money to buy the time. You get to choose what you want to do, who you want to hang out with, who you want to talk, and all that, dude. That's why having Alex on here, man, is such an honor because to him, he doesn't have to. He can say, "No, I'm sorry, man. No can do." Right? It's just when you have that money, dude. The money give you choices yeah. of what you want to do. That's right. And uh, and dude, before that, Alex, I was all caught up into busyness, man. Not about productive. I was caught up into busy. I want my calendar to be jam packed with stuff. That's how I feel like I'm successful. It makes me feel important. Yeah. Mm. That, th those are, that's, and, and dude, I'm guilty as well. I've been guilty of that. Sometimes those are the BS stories that we tell ourselves yes. to make us feel good, right? Don't mistake busyness for productivity because they're not the same thing. Just because you're busy doesn't mean you're being productive. And, uh, and so don't, don't fall into that trap. Yes. And it doesn't mean you're making that money either, right? <laughs> To those of you, just like what Alex said, man, two jobs. I, I just need to work harder, work harder, two jobs, two, three jobs, whatever it is. Jim Peck, dude, that's not, I'm telling you, um, you know, I mean, listen, man, for some of you, that's what you like, right? You like the busyness. You like, you, you, like I've talked to people, man, that makes a whole lot of money in our mastermind. CG makes a lot of money and, and they like to be busy. They like the calendar to be full, dude. I want to be like Alex. <laughs> I'm you know, telling I, you, man, I want to be like Alex. I want to wait, you know, and, and, and I'm telling you, man, it's like I said, it's not for everybody, but, but right, right. for me, that is success. Thank you, Kong. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. And you want to know what, the, there's no right or wrong, but just mm. there's only a wrong if you're not doing what's right for you. I don't, let, me, let me repeat that. There's only a wrong if you're not doing what's right for you. So if you want to build the biggest building in town and you want to have 500 employees and you want to work. 12, 14, 16 hour days, there's nothing wrong with that, but just be very purposeful and intentional and be clear of why you want it and then go get it because it's possible. But if that's not you follow, like follow what you want to do. Don't follow other people's path. Like success leaves clues. So draw inspiration. Like I've drawn inspiration from you, Kong, and I've learned some things from you and, and I'm sure vice versa. And you've learned mm -hmm. from others, but don't, Kong isn't trying to like, you know, like don't try to be somebody else, be you, but just draw yeah. from their experiences and from their knowledge. I love it, man. <laughs> cause, cause, uh, cause, cause, cause the man, when Alex bring that up, man, it's, um, I listen, just like what Alex said, man, we all go through some really, um, you know, we, we, we all have this up and down. It's like, you don't I, like the last thing I, I want people to think when I put content out there, it's not life. My life is perfect. Dude, it's not perfect. I have days where I wake up and I go, oh, she, <laughs> I got to put out some fire. I don't want to deal with this. There are days where, yeah. you know, like you don't want to do anything. Right. But then I beat myself up sometimes for not, you know, for, uh, and, and I beat myself up uh, for not being, doing what I do. But dude, I think Gary V mentioned, man, like he, like he go hard, but he said there's days where he sleeps it, do whatever it is. And he don't beat himself up. And I say, dude, that's right. amazing. Yep. You know, I say, dude, he said he, he just don't beat himself up. That's right. That's right. It doesn't serve you long-term when you beat yourself up and, and you play that guilt card. If anything, it holds you back. Yes. And imagine, you know, one of the analogies I use is imagine try you, we're all on this, you know, game of life, right? We're, imagine we're on a, on a, on a board and, and we're, we're running, right? And, and life is a, is a, is a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? But imagine you're running this life and you're holding on to this baggage. It could be a baggage of guilt, anxiety, fear, depression, all these negative emotions. And we have the choice to just let these negative emotions go. When you let, when you like take off the shackle or the ball around, you're like your ankle, 
you're going to be able to move through this game of life a lot quicker and you're going to move like forward with the people you want. But um, first you have to make the decision to let go of the things that are holding you back. And that could be guilt. It could be beating yourself up or any number of things, but, but you got to get clear on, on what's holding you back. Absolutely, man. And, and those of you who, who's watching this, man, I really want you guys to understand that everybody have problems, right? Life is not, well, dude, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, like, I don't believe in having just a perfect life. Okay. We, we, we all have problem. We, we all have bad days and good days. It's just your problem might be a little bit smaller than someone else's problem. Right. Because yeah. you're dealing with bigger things. Um, so just, 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 just don't look at them and say, Oh my God, they, they got everything figured out and all that. I'm telling you, man, I, I, I we go right. Uh, Alex, we, we, we've been in this, the, uh, the CG. Some of these members are, I'm telling you big power players, but same yep. thing. They all run into problems. They all have stuff. And that's why they go to mastermind. That's right. So That's don't right. go ahead, bro. Kong, what one thing I'm gonna say, man, is uh, don't don't run or be fearful of problems and challenges because that's how we grow. I got challenges on a daily basis, and sometimes they sometimes they beat me up, man. You know, and sometimes and, and you have you have to fight through them. But um, the meaning I define, uh, how I define the the problem is what's gonna make me, and the problem is how I'm gonna grow. Because imagine a life without challenges and problems. You might think to yourself, "Oh, I would love that life. That life would be pretty boring." You yep. know, at least at least to me. I mean, without a. a you got to grow, man, you know, and, and, and so uh, look at challenges from a different lens with a different perspective and, uh, and it'll, it'll open up the, uh, the ability to solve those challenges quicker when you look at it with the right lens. Dude, man, um, Alex, let me ask you this, man. When you, okay, so uh, maybe I, I want to make sure that I answer, I ask the question correctly. So I'm going to go and actually share my experience first here. Okay. So when I go through problem, you guys, like when I go through problem that I face where, where you felt like it's just too much for you, like it's just too much. There was time in my life, man, when I go through where we almost lost everything, I felt super vulnerable. I felt so vulnerable. I was, I, dude, I woke up, I cry, I cry myself to sleep. And, um, let me tell you what, what really helped me got over those days. Like, and I heard someone said this on YouTube or something. When you take your problem and you throw it on the table compared to everyone else's problem, I promise you, you're going to quickly want your problem back. Cause then it makes your problem where you're like this big, it becomes like very, very tiny compared to someone else's problem. So what helped you got over those, those period of time, man, it was tough, dude. It was extremely tough because it was tough for me, man, because I got into the point where I almost lost everything that my wife and I worked super, super, yeah. super hard for. And it was so hard for me to, like, if I was single, it was okay. Yeah. Like, I failed great. Boom. I made the mistake. But, dude, it was so hard for me because I, I have someone else that depend on me to succeed. And, and I felt like I let them down. And I, it was a stupid mistake. How can I make this mistakes? And I was just beating myself up really, really bad, bro. Really, really bad. And what helped me got over men is listening to other people's problems. <laughs> Dude, what helped me got over, bro, is listening to other people's problems. It was, yeah. to me, it was not motivation. I was like sick. I was like, I don't want to listen to no more motivation. It's easy for you to say. I get it, bro. you're at a better place. But dude, what helped me get over, bro, was listen to people that had bigger problems than me. Yeah. So my fit. My fits, right? My mentor. Oh, my, what so, a character. Dude. So I, I seen all his things that he gone through. And then I get on the phone with him, right? And he said, Kong, look, I'm having this couple million dollars issue right now that I need to get done and this and this. And at what time my, in my life, my building burned. I was dealing with a bunch of stuff. The eviction renter. I was dealing with like you know, 10 times more than what you're going through right now, bro. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, and then him, and then another friend that I got, man, in, um, in, in California, he said, Kong, dude, you, you didn't sleep for four days, bro. Try four months. And I, he's like, I was putting my whole entire family through this and this and that dude, it makes my, my problems much smaller. And I said, Kong, dude, you, you you're saying this is what you want. And you can't even handle this problem. Mm. How can, you know, 
like because you gotta pay that price, man. You gotta go through this to get here. Yeah. And then just hearing people problem, man, it makes mine so small, small, small. And and I felt and, and it becomes like a really small problem to me where I thought it was really big and then it just becomes really small, man. Yeah. And it's that's what helped me get yeah. over my big issue, man. So now let me ask you, Alex, when when you run into things, man, what helps you got over it? Yeah. So look, uh, what, what you just shared is something that, that helps me a lot is perspective, right? Your, your, mm. uh, your worst day is most people's best day. Mm. Right. And when you think about that, I mean, just by mere fact that you are listening to us on YouTube or a podcast platform or a computer or a laptop on a smartphone, dude, there's people out there that would swap places with you in a heartbeat. Yep. just to be able to have those resources. So to answer your question directly, I'll tell you what, man, and, and sometimes I'm guilty of not like taking my own advice, right? And, but when I really think back to a lot of the, the big challenges I've had in my life, whenever I've taken the focus off of me and my problems and I've shifted to serving and helping others, my problems like either diminish or completely evaporate. Like, because it just... It's, it's almost like when you, um, when you take the focus off of yourself and you put it on someone else and you genuinely put it on someone else, like that's what life becomes about, man. It becomes about service. And, and when you start to like, I'll give you a perfect example. When, when I was in this, uh, when I was in Guatemala, um, I went, I've gone two years in a row now earlier this year, um, man, I was going through my wife and I had kind of had a few challenges, you know, we had a, a few arguments and things of that nature and nothing big, you know, but like, I was just, I wasn't in a great place mentally. Right. And, and I went out there and I met, I met several couples that, um, live in it, the, the poverty is just uh, really sobering, right? They live on dirt floors. They mm. live in probably houses that are six by eight, six by nine, you know, with a, a stove with, with, with no insulation. And you got six, seven, eight family members living in this space. And, um, and yet, despite having such a lack of, in most people's eyes, they were so filled with love. They were so filled with togetherness and they were so happy. And yet here I am back home and, you know, I'm complaining about a couple, of arguments I had with my wife. You know what I mean? And, and I was feeling kind of like not great about it. Not that you're supposed to feel good about an argument, but like when you go out and you just, you experience other cultures and you just see how um, their problems would be like my nightmare, but yet mm. they didn't even, they just, dude, it's a way of life for them and they just overcome, you know? And, and I always think to myself, um, the bigger the setback, the bigger the comeback. Love right. It, and, and so, uh, man, it, it and, that that's not a practical way to deal with problems because it's not like I'm going to travel to travel to a third world country just to like experience. But sometimes it's just about doing something for someone else. You know, sometimes it's about picking the phone up and saying, Hey man, how can I help you? What do you need me for? What can I do? How do I add value? Like, tell me because I genuinely want to help you. And, um, and when you do something for someone else, it just, it, it tends to just, you take the focus off of yourself and then my problems are not a thing anymore. Like it doesn't mean that they're solved. It, I still have to deal with them, but understanding that solving that is going to help me grow and it's going to help me become the best version of myself gives me a lot of peace of mind. Wow, man, man. Wow. You, you guys, sorry that, um, you know, we're not talking about a whole lot of real estate and wholesaling and things like that. But for those of you who's gone through this whole journey, man, I really hope that this, um, this talk here I have with Alex will add a tremendous value to you. Um, it's because, man, I'm telling you, dude, it's, 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 it's a mindset game. And sometimes you're, 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 you're fighting your inner self and you're battling with myself. And there's one thing that I want to say, man, is that, you know, when I was going through a lot of stuff, man, I, I, and I cannot leave this out. Um, I, I don't think that I would be here if, and I'm not trying to get, uh, be religious or anything, but I wouldn't be here, man, doing what I'm doing if it weren't for God, man. I'm telling you, man, there's days, time, my, my darkest days, dude. I pray. I pray hard. I, I, that's all I can do. I feel so vulnerable. I pray. But let me tell you something. Praying alone, praying is great. But you got to but you gotta have the faith and you just got to take the action. You can't just pray and crawl up and not facing your, your fears. And I'm telling you, a lot of time when you face your problem, it, it doesn't turn out to be as big as you think it is. Because your head is playing it, making it big, but it's not as big. 
but dude, I pray and, and I and I pray and I say, God, just just guide me. And you just take one one step at a time, man. Just do what you can, and just one at a time. And I promise you, um, everything uh, will get uh, resolved, man. But um, you know, oh, can I can I add can I can I piggyback one quick thing to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, that really what you just shared really really resonates with me and. While my answer was about service, and that's a key part of me diminishing or reducing the size of my problems, at the end of the day, you really brought to the forefront for me that um, faith is a muscle, and I'm constantly flexing that muscle of faith. And I think I don't get overwhelmed by, by problems because at the end of the day, as cliche as that statement is, brother, I know that God's going to get me through it because he's never failed me. Mm. Because what problem? I'm here today. So what problem has been so big that has prevented me from to getting to the point that I am today? So I know that whatever the problem is, there's a solution. Now, I might, not, I, can, I might not be able to accomplish it myself. It might require the help of others, but that's why we invest in ourselves. And that's why we have it. At the end of the day, God has your back. So um, I think you nailed it, man. I just wanted to piggyback that, I, that. That's really who deserves the glory. Yeah, man, dude. Absolutely, man. I mean, there are days in my life, dark days, where you feel like there's no one um, that's there for you. Like, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like no one's there for you. You just feel like you just, you just at this alone or something, yeah. right? But I'm telling you, man, um, you're not, right? You, you're not. Do your pray, whatever that you need to do, and you just go out there and just have faith. Just believe that whatever you're going to do, whatever action that you're going to take, whether it's some mistakes or whether it's right or wrong, just know that everything will work out and it'll work out in your favor. And you won't, you see, you can only connect the dots by looking backwards. So at the time, it might, you know, like it, it seems like the puzzle's not figured out, but you can just, you, you can only connect the dots by looking backward. Like where I am today in my life, I can tell you, when I look back, I know exactly, okay, that happened because of that reason, because of that, because of that, because of that. That's why I'm here today and exactly where I want it to be, um, you know, but at the time, you can't see that. But I'm telling you, you just have to have faith and you just got to push through and just take it one step, one day at a time, man. That's right. But Alex, man, we're going to wrap this up, bro, brother. For those that want to connect with you, bro and learn about what you are doing or getting into your group, getting your mentorship, your training or whatever it is, man, to take their life from where they are to where they want to be, to have a more better fulfilling and happier life, bro. How can they connect with you, brother? Thank you, Kong. Again, man, genuinely appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to add value and to, you know, just share my, my experiences and, and, and my thoughts with your audience. If there's anything I can do to help, um, a couple of couple places to connect with me. Um, I have a podcast called The Flip Empire Show. So if you go to flipempire.com, that's one place where you can connect with me. Um, you can also find me on social media, uh, Alex Pardo in, in most platforms. Uh, and then also ascendyoursuccess.com is our, our mastermind and coaching community. But yeah, man, listen, if anyone is out there and um, any of my story resonates or you have any questions, if I can help or add value in any way, I don't have a course or a training or anything like that that I'm selling. Um, I just, just want to help. So reach out to me and uh, happy to answer any questions that, uh, that anyone might have. And the thing is, you guys, uh, throughout this whole interview, I don't want you guys to mistake him, dude. Alex been in the game for 15 years. The guy crushes, has system, has team. Like, he knows the in and out. Just yeah. decided he has a new venture, new passions that he has to go and do. All right? So, anyways, man, Alex, I want to say thank you so much, bro, for taking your time to come on here, man. I truly, really appreciate, appreciate it. I love this guy. Hey, are you going to be in CG in uh, September? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll be there virtually at the very minimum. I'm... I might. I'm not sure yet. Sure. No problem, brother. If you were there, man, I look forward uh, to seeing you again. So for those of you who's, who's watching, listening, please do me a favor, man. If this, if, if this video here or, 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 or podcast add any value to you, smash the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Wholesale to Million family. And let's go get this money. Love uh, it. Thank you, brother. Have a thank good you, one, man. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you, my friend. Yeah. Ciao, dude.